All right. So this is King Zone versus SKT game one. The bands were Vladimir, Sivir, Callista, and then out of SKT, Azir, Galio, and Jace. So Jace being banned away from Khan. King Zone actually pick the Rise. Probably gonna be for BDD. Zero already banned away. Interestingly enough, by the way, Khan is actually the premier uh, Rise top lane player. Although we're probably never gonna see that come out. I do think that Rise is a champion that could belong up in top lane. Hogma and Sedge picked up for SKT. And Ezreal and Braum are now picked up. So lots of ability to accelerate the game. But the thing is that with SKT being on the red side with the Kog'Maw, they can actually just take a pretty defensive, uh, defensive route. They could try to play around that. They could actually go into a Kog'Maw. They could, they could just Orianna here and get that out of the way. Instead, they actually opt for a Malzahar. So they're not going to play into... Bang more. They're going to actually be evened out a little bit. So the Malzahar, um, he falls under a little bit of pressure against the Rise uh, early, and then it's really on uh, BDD and Peanut to see what they can actually do. Um, as long as Faker can make it to Lost Chapter and then get to his second blue buff and stuff, stuff becomes fine, and then Malzahar takes over. Takes over. So now we'll see what the pinches are in the second ban phase. So Nar being banned away from Khan. And this would actually be that much stronger if the Rise was actually a flexible pick, but I just don't think that it's actually inside of their... Uh, oh, it's supposed to be times two speed. Okay, sorry about that. Nar and Jarvan being pinched away, Tom Kench being pinched away. So they're just making sure that SKT cannot stop anything once they get locked up, rooted up, etc. It makes it that much easier for Braum. Gnosis actually banned away. And Gangplank now going to be picked. It is on red side. Red side Gangplank. Nar has been taken away. We'll see what Khan wants to pick into this. And Camille. Always excellent to see him on a pretty strong carry champion. And Kha'Zix. So, enormous amounts of aggression. The thing, though, is, is that Camille and Ryze should actually be able to exert enough pressure early on that Peanut can actually be flexible with how he wants to open up the game. He can either go for pressure and gank-centric playstyle, or he can actually just opt for uh, initial farming and then follow that up with uh, aggressive playstyle before Faker and Thal would be able to, uh, to neutralize any sort of pressure. So Alistar picked up for SKT. I do wonder if uh, Janna actually might just be a little bit better, even though bottom lane could get a little bit out of control. They have so much luxury. They have so much scaling inside of their, uh, inside of their team. They could just fall back on that as long as they protect mid lane. And then it's very, very good. They have very good uh, anti-Baron. Like they can just protect the Baron from the coverage of their, their own red side jungle. So we can talk about everything uh, once we get into this. Okay, so let's just talk about some of the stuff that can go on here. Basically, uh, this team is just so strong. It is so gold efficient, okay? This team uh, spikes uh, two to three, two to three, spikes two to three. Um, Camille doesn't really slow down. Camille, Camille keeps getting obnoxious, but yes, she has a very, very big wake up. Um, obviously, Infernal Drake. Super valuable for both parties. Super, super strong for both parties. Obviously a little bit more valuable um, for King Zone than it is for SKT, so expect that to be a really big priority. Um, so the, the one thing that we can talk about here is that if Faker can get to Lost Chapter and a second blue buff, um, they can actually, they should be able to have a, a pretty good level of control over right side river. So what we're looking to see is how much pressure can King Zone actually dish out early? Getting Camille ahead is probably the, the strongest thing that they can do. 
If Ezreal gets ahead, he is very, very obnoxious and slippery, and that can be problematic too. If BDD gets ahead, it's actually not the worst. Um, on the flip side, if anyone from SKT gets ahead, it's pretty nightmarish for Kingzone. They definitely need to maintain their advantage throughout the entire thing. And you can see that Peanut, yes, he is going for the full clear. And now he goes for the Scuttle Crab. Takes that away. Blank came into the left side jungle. Knows exactly where Peanut is. You can see the pings coming down on him. Okay, that doesn't end up resetting. Yeah, okay, it did reset. So Peanut actually made an error. Didn't end up getting the Gromp. And that's actually a pretty big loss of tempo. BDD getting a lot of value right there. Faker under enormous amounts of pressure. And don't forget that there's also Voidlings inside of that. Thal doing a pretty okay job up there in top lane. Probably getting a lot of value out of that Kleptomancy. Now Blank just continuing to get vision out. He has vision basically on the side of the map that is the most important. It's just important to make sure that you can protect Thal against any sort of pressure that would try to come out from Peanut and Khan. I'm going to end up recalling there. Oof. BDD getting a ton of damage out. Lots of pressure. Really, really like that. What they just did. And it forces Faker and Blink to share XP there. Really, really, really good play. Double spell book. Coming down. And SKT just basically acknowledging, hey, we just have to keep our lanes really, really healthy. Spellbook plays right into that. So as long as Gangplank, I mean, he's at six right now, it's very difficult to make stuff happen down in bottom lane. Faker's going to have his teleport back up in a few moments. And so realistically, the, the openings are going to be primarily just in top lane. They need Khan to come online because he's a very, very big piece to the puzzle right now. Taking a pretty aggressive trade right there, making him really low. They ping out Faker. And remember, the thing, the thing about the bot priority uh, and it being so important is because of that Infernal Drake. Both teams really care about that. You see that there was no like real chaotic pressure on the right-hand side leading up until now. So the, another key objective, in a way, is actually going to be Faker's next blue. So you have to pay attention to that. He's really far behind in mid and in the CS department right now. BDD doing such a good job. I mean, he, he's up 21 CS, and then how many Voidlings is he up? Maybe he's killed, like, 20 by now. Ultimate comes down. BDD not respecting it. Just ends up insta-going down right there. That was a really nice pick-off. This is something that SKT really needed. So, Faker, I mean, he has the spell thieves for the modern regeneration and stuff, and then also the ramp from the item itself is going to help him catch back up in the uh, gold department. But that pressure relief was so big, it puts so much pressure onto Peanut, it lets SKT get vision where they shouldn't be allowed to, and it puts Faker in such a good spot. That was basically one of the worst things that could happen for Kingzone. You know, we talked about early on that they have to remain ahead. They have to get advantages. <clears throat> People in chat telling me Voidlings don't count toward CS. I'm just talking about his gold. I already know that they don't count towards CS. Another ultimate, not able to actually get anything out of Peanut, and Faker, a little bit caught out by BDD, doesn't have any mana left, and now BDD has priority, and now th this is like one of those problems, yes Faker has teleport, yes he can come back to the lane, but he's hard pressed to find an opening that doesn't just let BDD go off, get the recall. Now Faker's actually behind on tempo, BDD has teleport too, and you can see that Khan really softening up Thal. And Peanut is already pathing on the left-hand side. Thal does have teleport, so...
They're actually going for an Infernal, and it looks like it's actually just going to be given over to them. So, a little bit of missed opportunity by King's Zone. Something they really, really did not want to have happen. And that's actually going to put SKT even further ahead. Because King's Zone hasn't managed to do anything up until this point. SKT's basically been a rock. And, I mean, this is one of those scary things about uh, these types of team compositions. Is Spellbook's, uh, Spellbook is a little bit unique. The buff to mid lane uh, turret uh, quite a few patches ago, I mean, that's big too. All of these components really play into it. And with the, the Klepto Gangplank allowing him to get out of laning phase and have a much easier time and stuff in, you know, what could otherwise have just been really brutal matchups, it's all tying into these, uh, these unkillable engines that can just be created. So... SKT is super, super, super far ahead. Don't let the fact that the gold score at the top says that the, uh, you know, it's even. It's not even by any means right now. SKT manages to come in and even steal away the Herald, so everything's actually just going well for them right now. Prey getting a lot of terror damage, but now SKT venturing through the jungle as a unit. Maybe we're gonna steal away Peanuts. Uh, jungle. And also, I mean, it's games like this that further incentivize me to even just actually continue to say that uh, Jax is just a better AD jungler than Kha'Zix. He doesn't slow down. He's, I think he has more utility than people give him credit for. More so than actually even Kha'Zix. I mean, Kha'Zix definitely does still have a strength, but God, BD is just doing so well in mid. Khan looking for every opening that he can get. Very nice lane manipulation. Stole his gas. Probably American Second Life. All the spell books. You know, trying to get some counter jungle again. The game, the game is in a very, very lull state, and like this, this is one of those exact situations where it, it's basically like SK Telecom has to wait. It's like over. They don't need to do anything else. <clears throat> Basically, Longzu was like a, a bacteria that had to, like, kill SKT. And SKT, they got on antibiotics, you know? Longzu didn't kill, or Kingzone didn't kill them quick enough. Now SKT actually going to pick up a second Infernal Drake. The, oh, wow, Peanut steals away the Infernal. That is super bad. Gorilla ends up going down for it. But I, the, the Infernal Drake pickup is really, really, really big. Because them being able to one-shot champions is important. So even though SKT has an Infernal and Kingzone have an Infernal, it's still not the same. It's more valuable for Kingzone than it is for SKT. Even though we said earlier that gold is more valuable on SKT, gold itself is more valuable. But just rare, uh, like raw damage ramp is better for Kingzone because of how their team composition operates. So yes, if SKT is ahead in gold and they can get items quicker, or like their items are just more efficient than King Zones, it doesn't change the fact that King Zone just they might not be as efficient on items, but if they can just get a little bit more kick, that changes everything because of how the team fight takes place. Game is definitely in a, a very big lull state. I don't mean the uh, the Twitch emote. You see the gold score, it's still pretty okay. Not that it necessarily means anything, but that's just like a testament to. That gangplank up there, and also obviously yes, the uh, the kills, the assists. 
Yes, Ezreal has Klepto as well. Effort taken a very big chunk, and again, SKT, they don't need to do anything. They just have to sit back. They have no obligation to do anything. If they could have laning phase last for 40 minutes, they should want that. Because eventually what's going to happen is they're going to turtle up and they are gonna, they're going to they're going to A-move King Zone. It's exactly what's going to happen. Right now, nothing's really happened. It's, it's almost impossible to even to talk about stuff. Because the onus is on, like, Kingzone to make a, a really, really big blunder. Or to, to, to try to do something, right? SKT has to be the one to make a blunder. If they just keep having the lanes bounce the way that they are, everything's going to be completely okay. SKT could actually handshake turret trades at this point because their mid tier one is still actually so healthy they could lose top tier one turret and then just fight with the condensed terrain and then just continue to scale up that would be an option now if you're king zone you need to just wait for your next item spike on the Camille, wait for the next item spike, and then look to, you have to make a pick. Have to clear out vision. You have to somehow set up like a flank or do something. Otherwise you're staring down the barrel of a shotgun. Eventually that SKT team comp is, is just going to melt them. One of the interesting things is, you know, having a conversation, I say this sometimes, um, with a, a pro player and you know he mentioned how you know you look at games in NA and EU and they have kills and you know you look at Korea and the games are all going 40 50 you know they're, they're going super long and it's not because Korea doesn't know what they're doing it's because it's quite the opposite Korea does know that you know certain stages of the game aren't supposed to do anything sometimes they obviously make pretty big errors right we've seen that in a few VOD reviews so far but for the most part they're not needlessly forcing things that rely on um, opponents to make mechanical blunders constantly you know they're, they're not actively looking for that stuff playing a very controlled game now the split pushes open up and basically at this point I mean Cloud Drake's coming up SKT should in a way, actually try to look to actively defend it if they can, just to prevent um, Elder Dragon from ever spawning. SKT look for a pick onto Gorilla. They end up getting the pick. Kingzone is just... Uh, they're not really getting anything done. And then I, th this is also partially the thing that I was talking about. Now imagine if that Kha'Zix was a Jax. This is a lot scarier. Maybe not in this particular game, because, I mean, they dug themselves uh, into a wall with how they drafted and then how the openings and everything was played. And when, when you look at stuff like that and you're like, well, what could have been differently? You know, it, it's sort of a duo dynamic between the jungler and the laner. You know, mid and top, they're traditionally thought of as 1v1 lanes, but they're not. They're 2v2 lanes. So sometimes manipulating the wave or, you know, doing stuff in a, in a way that would create an opening for your jungler, it's really important. The only way that Kingzone wins this game is by picking someone off at the very, very start of the fight. The problem is, is that the person that you basically need to pick off is going to be Faker or Bang. You can't just pick off Gangplank. 
fortunate thing for King's Own though is that all of their members do duel pretty well. This would be one of those spots where Khan could have actually shoved up, walked all the way up to mid, and then just gone back down into bottom. Even if like he's on top of a ward or something, it's still adding some level of pressure. This is I'm gonna start calling these things clock comps, not even just scaling comps. These are these are clock comps. Obviously, Twitch chat will probably remove the L. In which case, they're not that far off. Cock block, demonetized. They send BDD bottom. He has the teleport available. Oh god! <laughs> I just realized the comparison. To get pick off on subpoena, not really able to do anything there. Khan trying to 1v1 Thal, but Gangplank saying that he's not having it. Faker getting zoned out, but it doesn't really matter. Their, their comp's just too strong. You can't do anything. Just can't do anything. Okay, well, Prey, Prey's like, you know what? I'll take Bang down. And Malzahar, I mean, they're just way too strong. Mal's is going to come into mid. I think that Khan wasn't expecting him to have as low as HP. Maybe he actually could have just killed him under turret. But obviously he doesn't have any... Uh... Well, actually, let me think. If he hits the stun immediately... Uh... That's thin. That's, a that's actually really thin. I do actually truly wonder what happens, because he does have Sterax. Yes, he has Rylize and stuff. Camille hits like a train. Thal ends up going down for absolutely no reason. Take another look at the replay. And there's just there's no there's no universe that Kingzone's able to do anything. Talked about this from Pick Bam. Really, really like the use of spellbook by Bang and Effort both. What? What just happened? What, like... Let me see the mini-map while this is happening. That's what I need to see right now. Why are they there? Like, what? What? You can't lose! What does King Zone need? Well, LS, they need, they need, you know, random members to aimlessly just walk into Fog of War and secure vision that they don't actually need because an objective's not up, and even when it is up, you're just going to aim move into it. Okay, so what should we do? We should go into the Fog of War! It's exactly what fucking SKT's thinking. It's exactly what they're thinking. That's great. It's fascinating. We see this out of so many teams. Great! Alright, cool. Yeah, we're gonna give up Elder. This is good. Then, let's take a team fight! Pick off, at least pray. Faker's gonna catch top. No, don't, don't get me wrong. As long as SKT fade the Elder duration, they're fine. As long as they fade it, they're completely fine. There's a minute and a half remaining. You can get this turret. Yep. You don't need to take the team fight. You really can't lose. I don't even care what happens. You don't need to take the team fight. They're so far ahead. You almost have teleport up on Gangplank. Just farm your own jungle. Get elixirs. You cannot lose the game. Good. They, they did back off. 
the giant spell on Bang. Is that going to be a Frozen Mallet? Just make him that much more obnoxious to kill? I really like that, if so. Malzahar is at the point where Rise just does nothing anymore. Mal's is so beautiful. I love Mal. I love champions that don't slow down. Every, every time I, I say the words don't slow down, I, I literally think of the first time where I heard that, like in a, in a game setting. There was a, does anyone know the game Hero Clicks, if you're listening to this? Does anyone know the dark side that he takes damage and he keeps getting better? That, that's the first time I heard the, the term doesn't slow down. And the reason that I say that is because he's like pointing in a direction, like he's just going to keep advancing forward. So every time I say that phrase, that's actually what I think of. Think of uh, dark side. All right. Now SKT actually playing it really safe. They're just going to wait on the Baron. And this is a correct move. There, there's no way for King Zone to do anything. There's really just no way. Unless SKT really miss basically the only way King Zone can recover in this game. See this? This was needless. Look. See these two minions right here? Does it matter that much? No. But the point is, is just let these minions kill them. Why? Unless you're, you're making the argument that you want a little bit of extra vision, you know, shortly. That doesn't make too much sense, right? In, in, the, in the big picture, in the grand scheme of things, there is no universe King Zone should be able to penetrate this. This is so hard to botch. Unless King Zone just does the unthinkable. Baron's up. They could just go into the Baron pit and then look to fight inside of a narrow corridor. God, they they gave up the corridor to the poke. Faker actually got hit and now Faker's zoned out. They broke the phalanx. They conceded all ground. What? Now rinse, wash, repeat. Camille back in bottom. And now SKT panicking. Well, not panicking, but they're, they're, they're coming out of their position. Just take it. Just start it and force them to come in and bring Gangplank. No. They're, they're so worried about the poke. And I think that the main issue is that Faker, when he doesn't have a shield, it's so scary. Because Kha'Zix and uh, Ezreal, can, they can poke away at it, but it's just a positional battle. Rinse, wash, repeat at this point. Um, or wash, rinse, repeat. It's not the end of the world. I mean, we're, we're seeing everyone's basically at full item here. Where's Orn when you need him? This is so sad. This, this is actually one of those main instances of the thing that I talked about, where the players individually, pound for pound, are weaker. And so in dances like this, King Zone can actually wiggle themselves into spots they should never be able to get into. Like, I feel like if, if KT was SKT, right, this wouldn't happen. Like, th this kind of a dance would not happen. And you can see that K King Zone, they're trying to tug away at the turtle. They got the, the, they got the ult out of effort. That's actually huge. They're trying to tug away at it um, by using, you know, the rise in top lane. They got the Camille in bottom lane. Thal is tied up. And Khan actually won out on the trade. Thal losing out on the trades. This is scary. Elder came up. Now, the problem with this is that SKT, their comp is... Oh, no. They're going to trade Baron for Elder. Wait, what? What? What is this positioning? What? 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 What?
Oh my god. This is this is a clear example of individual superior players. Just wiggling their way out of It's like the jaws of life. Wow. Elder and Baron. Let's just look let's just look again at the catastrophe. This is like if you all bought Bitcoin when it was at like 10k or something and the next day it drops to a dollar. Like that is I don't even know what to think about this. This is actually one of the this is one of the stages where there might be an argument to just have bang and effort stand here, right? And then they flash over after you get the baron. There, there, there might be an argument for this. The whole positioning leading up to this. Look at Mouse. Why is he zoned out over? He should just hug this. Cast the voidlings. Just get the like Gangplank's not even there. They're starting it before Gangplank gets there. Just take a look at this. And I think that they're doing it because I think they thought that they would handshake a trade. But Kingzone actually just brought the heat. This is a, this is a really, really nice example game of a team composition that... It, it, this is actually David versus Goliath. This is really David versus Goliath. Wow. And then they just take it's so it's so bizarre. Okay, well, that's David versus I mean that's the end of the game, I assume. I assume that's just the end of the game. There's no way that Thal can hold on against uh Elder Baron. Yeah, there's there's no way. SKT seem completely unaware of how to capture the Baron against Kingzone or like how to actually position to do it. This was a, th this is actually a heroic like comeback in a way. This should never have been allowed to happen in a million years. It is so difficult if effort just, if effort and blank just play defensive and you encroach upon them using Faker this is another example of like a phalanx composition falling apart. Like there's a there's a hole or like an opening.